Just before we start looking at some of those core modules, let's have a look at some of the other options that you've got when running your Node.js programs from the command line. So other commands on the command line can accept values to alter the behavior of what that command is actually doing. For example, the echo command just prints a string back onto the command prompt. So the actual command here is echo and the hello and world strings are actually referred to as arguments that are passed to the echo command. And we can make use of this functionality within our Node.js programs. So let's create a new file and I'll save that as command.js and just save it in our Node.js Essentials folder. And I'm simply going to put one console.log in there and what I'll actually pass into the parentheses is process.argv. And the argv property of process actually holds an array with all of the arguments that are passed to our Node.js program. So if we would just run this as it is, you'll see we get two entries in the array already even though we didn't pass any arguments to our program. So argv will always have these initial two entries into its array. And the first entry is actually the location of the Node.js binary that's executing the program. In other words, where Node.js is installed on your computer. And the second item is the complete path to where the program is stored. So if we were to run our command again, but actually pass some arguments to it, you'll see that passing the values of one and two as arguments actually puts two new entries into our array stored under the argv property. And you might notice as well that even though they look like numbers that I passed in from the command, they actually get stored in the array as strings. So let's write a little program that takes numbers as command line arguments and actually displays the sum of those numbers. So the first thing that we want to do is get all of the command line arguments. So I'm just gonna create a new variable and call it arguments. And in there, I'm going to get the value of process.argv, but I'm not too worried about where node is installed or indeed the path of this particular program. So I'm just gonna use the slice function to get rid of the first two elements. So now all I'm going to do is create another variable called sum that basically takes that arguments array and reduces that down into a single number. And if we log that out to the console, so you'd be expecting the value to be three, but because those arguments are passed in as strings, they actually just get concatenated together. So we need to make sure that the arguments are actually parsed into numbers before trying to do the sum. So just using the parseInt function around each of those string values and setting the accumulator to have a starting value of zero should do the trick for us. So let's just try it again with some different numbers. So that seems to be doing the trick quite nicely. So whilst it can be quite useful to pass an argument to one of your Node.js programs to modify the result of what it does, one of the powerful things about command line arguments is that you can receive that data from other programs. So it might be that you have another Node.js program or maybe even something completely different on your operating system that can actually feed data into your own Node.js programs. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll look at the OS module and also some of the other properties of the process object and how that affects the environment that you're working with.